Okay, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to our 2D Sandbox series. Um, so in the last episode we did Tile Drops, which is nice and fancy. I'm recording this literally straight after the last one. Um, so I haven't been able to check the comments, anything like that. I have been pre-recording a lot of videos because, um, as I announced on the Discord, I am going to be busy for a couple of, um, for two weeks actually, 14 days. Um, so I won't be actually able to record much at all. Um, so I've been stockpiling videos. Um, but yeah, so like I said, last episode we did uh, tile drops. This episode, I the thing I really, really want to do is fixing up these caves. So if I go to our scene view, uh, it'll give you a better idea of what's going on. Um, well, I mean, everyone following the tour, you know what's going on. These caves are literally just holes in the ground. In the game, you can see the sky through it. Doesn't make sense. Terraria doesn't do it. You know, it's, it's just bad. Um, so we're going to fix that. How are we going to fix it? Quite simple. Um, <laughs> we're going to duplicate our stone um, tile class. So control C, control V. I said control C, control V. Control D. There we go. All right, so stone. I'm going to call this uh, stone underscore wall. And then same here, stone well, stone space wall. Um, our tile sprites are going to be the same. This time we're going to say check in background. So that is fine there. Um, and now, uh, if check tile, it says I'm not using background elements. That is fine. That Okay, let's get rid of that. That's fine. Uh, that's going to give us an error up here, I believe. Um, in our player controller. Uh, where is it? I can't find it. Here. Just get rid of false. That's fine. Um, and then in our terrain generator again, you want to go down to place tile, I believe. Yes. So if tile is in background, then it was saying its order is in minus 10. I also want to modify its color a little bit. So new tile dot get component sprite renderer dot uh, color. And then we're going to say new color and I'll probably say for, so this takes in RGB, R is going to be 0.5F, 0.5F and 0.5F. We don't care about modifying the alpha. Um, and that is fine there. Okay, um, and then up here, when we... Uh, right, so in our tile atlas, we also have to reference that. So I'm going to say public tile class stone underscore wall. That's cool. And then in our terrain generator, when we say if generate caves, if you're meant to place a... Uh, if there's no cave there, then place a normal tile. Otherwise, if there is a cave there, we're going to say place tile, um, tile atlas dot stone wall at X and Y. Okay, so now we just have to head back into Unity and edit a couple of things. The main thing we have to edit, of course, is our tile atlas when we just have to say stone wall. Um, so find stone wall, select that, that's cool. And now, you know what? That might actually be enough. Maybe. Um, I think so. Let's generate our world and see what goes on. Okay, so our world is generated and it looks to be correct. Let's go into play mode. Yes, okay, here we go. Oh, oh, uh, yes, okay. So since, okay. Uh, because our trees are also in the background, their color is also getting modified, which is not what we want. If I break these tiles, obviously they also drop tile drops, which is perfect, that's what we want. If I break these ones though, there's no walls behind them. So, what I just have to say is if the tile is in foreground, then when I break it, move it to background essentially. I also fell through the ground then, interestingly enough. Um, apart from that though, our terrain is looking a bit more full now, which, you know what, I actually really like. Um, it would be nice, however, to, you know, rather than having, well, interesting, that also disappeared. 
Ooh, a couple of issues. Okay. Um, let's focus on the walls for now. It would be nice for this bit to be dirt since this is in the dirt area, if that makes sense. Uh, let's go in scene view and zoom out. So it would be nice to have these as dirt background walls, but down here and everything, that looks fine. And we just have to fix our trees. So we'll leave the trees for now. Let's fix the dirt because that is quite simple to do. Tar classes, duplicate our dirt with control D. And this is going to be called dirt underscore wall. Same here, dirt wall in background is true. Save that. Um, and then here, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, right, and sorry, in our tile class, yes, we have to go and create a public tile class dirt underscore wall yep and then in our terrain generation uh we just have to fix that up so that it gets the wall variant of that block which is a little bit harder to do so what i'm actually going to do is modify the tile class um script so that we rather than storing wall variants inside the tile atlas here they're actually going to be stored inside the for example dirt wall is going to be stored stored inside the dirt tile class kind of like a folder just to keep everything a little bit more organized as well as to make referencing a lot easier so step one delete stone, dirt wall and stone wall from tile atlas step two head to tile class and create a public tile class wall variant. Now, not every um, object tile class is obviously going to have a wall variant, but to those who do, then good. Um, and then all we have to do is, where's our line here? Cool. Um, obviously, stone wall doesn't exist, so it's this is going to actually be called tile class dot um, wall variant. Here we go. The reason I also did this is because, for example, in the desert and snow biomes, it was still generating stone as the background block, which it should not be doing. It should be generating sand and snow in the background. So um, let's just create those now as well. So dirt is asking for a wall variant, which is going to be dirt wall. Grass is going to be asking for a uh, wall variant, which, uh, you know what, let's do it as well. I'll do control C, control V. Oh, sorry, control D. This is going to be called grass underscore wall. Um, and the wall variant is gonna. So for grass walls, there is no wall variant. For grass, obviously, the wall variant is grass wall. Uh, let's call this um grass wall. And then I might change the uh sprite of this to be the top of the grass here. I wonder how that's going to look. And then obviously check is background as well. That's important. Stone have I set? No, I haven't. So stone wall variant is stone wall. That's fine. And then we just have to do it for um, these as well. So where is it? Sand and snow. Duplicate those. Let's modify snow first. So snow underscore wall. And then here, snow wall. And then just check in background. Go to snow. Drag in snow wall. Cool, and then same for sand. This should be called sand underscore wall down here. And then up here for tile names, sand wall. Wall variant doesn't exist for the wall. In background, click on sand tile class, drag and drop the sand wall tile class. Save that. And then let's press play. I'm gonna reduce the world size real quick to 100. It's giving us a error. Cool. Um, uh, okay, so I worked the issue out, guys. They're saying place the wall variant, but obviously not every tile has a wall variant. So else if tile class dot wall variant is not equal to null, then place the wall variant. And that should fix up our issue because it seems that as soon as it's getting to, um, it's trying to place a coal or like an ore in the background, that's when the issue is happening. Obviously it can't do that. So let's press play and okay so you'll see now that in most situations it works correctly um i don't know if i like this um i'm gonna get rid of that 
So let's go to tile classes, grass wall. Um, in fact, I might just delete grass wall as a whole and just leave it as this. That's going to be missing. So let's make this none real quick. There we go. Um, and now, so the issue is that every time there's meant to be a or in the background, it's not placing anything. So it's just the gap in the world, which is not very nice, of course. So in our tile classes, for coal, for gold, iron, and diamond, I want our wall variant to literally be stone wall. Where is it? Um, stone. Here, down the very bottom. There we go. Um, and then that should be fine. Yes. So now if I press play, I think it should work. Okay. 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 So it looks fine. You know what? That's, that look, that's looking so much better as well than just gaps in the terrain. Hold on. I want to play in this world. Cool. Um, the other issue that we were facing is this. This is disappearing. Uh, that's to do with our load chunks method. Which I think is actually up here. Um, create chunks. No, uh, refresh chunks. Refresh chunks. Refresh here. If it is distance is greater than where times four f. Let's say five f. Issue is now we're getting a lot of chunks. To be fair though, this is actually not that many considering we're gonna. Oh, whoa, what's going on? Index was out of bounds. Um, uh, I'm going to ignore that, act like nothing happened, and play again. Okay. That's nice. That's working fine and dandy. Now if I go all the way to the edge of the world, that chunk does not disappear. Good. Um, if I remove our player root object across the world, chunks still load and unload right. And now move him across. Yes, chunks are loading and unloading still. Perfect. All right, just want to fix that real quick. That's that fixed. Now, uh, real quick, when I remove a tile, I want to say if there's meant to be a block behind it, then, you know, drop the uh, place the block behind it. So in our terrain generation, I think, when we say remove, which is down here, our script is very long now. Remove tile, here we go. If it contains it, then we're saying destroy. If it contains it, destroy it, then that's fine. But, okay, we'll say if um, we have to obtain the tile class again. So we're literally copying this if statement again up here. There. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Cool. So if it's meant to, if it's dot tile dot wall variant, I think, yes, uh, is not equal to null. So it has a wall variant, then we're literally just going to place the wall variant. So place tile, it's going to ask for a tile. Our tile is this. Our coordinate is x and y. And that should be it, I believe. So now if I go back into Unity, as soon as I break, like, let's say, a dirt block, it will drop me my tile, but also move the dirt block to the background so it looks like our world is more solid. Here we go. Um, okay, so it does it sometimes, but okay, so what it's also doing is destroying it as soon as um, it's placing. You can kind of see it flashing. So it is working. That's why, for example, Terraria has different weapons to um <laughs> to break walls and uh, thingies, actual blocks, because it's literally saying if um you know if I'm holding a hammer, then break the background. If I'm holding an axe, then break the foreground, essentially, or you know, pickaxe. Um, except we don't have that set up yet, so it's just breaking both at the exact same time, which is good because it means it's working, but uh. We can't really test it. So what I'm gonna do is simply in our uh, player controller, it says if hit, I want this to be if dot down. So input the uh, get mouse button down. So that way I can't hold down the button. It will take the first input only, and then it won't take anything else. 
Uh, I think. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, yeah, so... I'm clicking. Um, it's not doing it because... Why? I'll tell you why. Because hit and place are being defined in fixed updates. That's actually incorrect. This should be defined in update because fixed update... Uh, I think I talked about this before. Depends on the computer's time. Um, which is not always accurate. Sometimes it'll register it as me clicking, sometimes it won't. Whereas update is frame rate dependent, so every frame I'm clicking, yada yada yada. Basically, use update for input and animation. Use fixed up for fixed update for anything that moves. Um, that's all you have to think about it. <laughs> but yeah, now this should work a lot better. Um, okay, look, it works. I can confirm indeed it works. It's just my code doesn't look as soon as we implement um, axes and stuff it's gonna work trust me trust me just put your full faith in me as long as your code is doing what mine is doing at this stage then you've done well so be proud okay the thing we should probably quickly fix though is these trees and stuff because obviously um you know they should not be darker so how can we fix that in our tile generation method Scroll down to when we do place tile. We're saying if tile is in background, then do this. Right? That's fine. But what this should actually say is if tile is in background, then do that. That's fine. Control X that line. Um, and then get rid of these brackets. And then paste that line right here. And then we want to say if tile.name.contains. Uh, if tile dot name dot two upper, we'll say that way case doesn't matter. Just in case um, dot contains wall. You want to write this in all caps. So if it contains wall, that means it's a wall, which means it should be darker than other tiles. Um, and in fact, I think it's a little bit too dark. So I might just do point six maybe. Um, just because I don't want the walls tiles being it like. Too dark in the background. Let's test it. If it does, if it doesn't look good, then we'll change it anyway. Uh, press play. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that our caves and stuff, they're darker. Our trees are now lighter. Um, I can obviously break the wall tiles, right? Uh, I can't wait till we implement hammers and axes. I won't lie, guys. There we go. Um, and yeah, so our wall tiles, yeah, okay. It works. Trust me, it works. Um, we'll do... We can't really implement um, hammers and axes and that sort of stuff until, uh, you know, we've implemented the inventory system. So, considering we've come this far in the tutorial, it might actually be a good time to implement the inventory system. So, we might do that in the next episode, or at least get started, because it is going to be quite a long t t um, tutorial for that. But, yeah, I'm going to end this episode here, because it's going on for a while. Um, terrain starting to look really good. Good job, guys, uh, if you kept up this far. Apart from that, join the Discord, um, uh, like, subscribe, all that. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.